So thanks everybody for joining us tonight. Um, we're excited that you guys all took some time out of your evening, evening to be here with us and hear a little bit about some of our new um, messaging opportunities that we have in the dashboard, as well as some of the ones that have been there. Um, just as a good opportunity time to refresh everybody on how those work. So before we get started, we want to do a quick review of our communication policy. So for the protection of our there sponsors, are still people, Julie. Or if you're saying there's still people coming in, they are, they are coming in now. So we'll uh, they should all be good to go. Um, so just a quick review of our communication policy for the protection of our sponsors and volunteers. Um, Reads Across America does not share email addresses, um, but you can communicate with them through our dashboard using the many different types of messaging opportunities that we have. Um, also, please remember that if you are a location coordinator, you should not solicit funds from donors who sponsor through your location, but not your group. And if you are a group leader, you should not solicit donors to change their donation to another cemetery um, if they are supporting your group, but another cemetery that might not be yours. So Reads Across America offers several different ways that you to help you clearly and consistently communicate with your local supporters. And some of those ways are group leaders, sponsors, and volunteers can contact the location coordinators to offer help with planning or to ask questions. Um, the location coordinators can easily connect with their supporting sponsorship groups to get them involved. Group leaders and location coordinators have access to thank their sponsors for support and give updates to volunteers who've registered to help. And group leaders and location coordinators can also reach out to Gray's specific sponsors to get additional information or let them know that a wreath was placed by sending them a picture. And if you join us next month, we're going to have some detailed instructions on how that you can send messages through Gray specific, um, how you can do some reorder messages, attaching photos, all that wonderful stuff. But um, it's a lot. So we are going to tackle that next month. So for Reads Across America location coordinators, you know, are, they are volunteers and they do their best to communicate their wreath laying ceremony plans through their location page details with page alerts and through the messaging system. But so Clayton, please make sure you take time, read through those pages. And then if you still don't see like all the information that you need, or if you wanna contact them to volunteer to help um, place wreaths or help with a ceremony, you can do that by going to the page at the bottom um, on the side contact location. There's a little phone icon. You can click on that. It's going to pop up a little message where you can type in um, kind of what you're looking for. And that is going to send an email to them so that they can respond to you. Um, and you can also always reach out to the li your liaison if you're looking for direct contact information. But this is just a quick way that you guys can kind of access that on your own. And just keep in mind that, you know, Many of our location coordinators are just like you guys, and they work full-time jobs, they have families, and many other responsibilities outside of their volunteer time for Reads Across America. So be a little bit patient with them, especially as we get busier into season. <coughs> so messaging sponsorship groups. So we wanna make sure that the location coordinators, you know, we have many sponsorship groups that want to help with the wreathling ceremony at the location they support. Their involvement in the Reads Across America mission, it gives them opportunity to serve for their local community. So we want to make sure that location coordinators give them that opportunity to serve by involving, involving them in planning and logistics, such as parking, traffic control, ceremony setup, presentations, wreath disbursement, and gray specific placements and cleanup. And I'm sure that there's many other ways that they can be involved. Um, so make sure you sponsorship groups communicate to the locations that you want to be involved and location coordinators. You wanna make sure that you're communicating with the sponsorship groups, the ways that they can be involved and where you may have a need for someone to step up to help. And you can use the messaging module in their dashboard to contact um, your sponsorship groups to share that information about replaying plans or to house for ask for help for those plans.
We also have where you can message sponsors. So you wanna make sure you take the time to thank your sponsors for that support. And this is for locations and groups. Um, thanking them for the support goes a long way and inspires them to get involved. There are multiple ways that you can message your sponsors. You can message, um, use the messaging module, um, which has been recently renovated. And we're very excited to show you that in a few minutes here. Um, you can use that to invite them to the wreath day or other events. And you can also message um, previous sponsors to remind them to sponsor again. In resource orders, you can message the sponsors individually to thank them for their support. So in the research orders, the way that you can um, thank them to it right there in the dashboard, quick and easy, is you're gonna go into your research orders and you can kind of follow along the instructions here where you can filter, you can either hit search and it'll bring up all of your orders or you can you know, drill it down, filter it by year to make a smaller um, list that generates. You can look for a specific, if you're looking for a specific order for an individual, um, you can also use your search filters to, to kind of drill that down a little bit. And then once you get down to where you want to start sending messages, if you click on the three dots that is at to the right of those orders, you are gonna see some options pop up that is send a thank you. And this is a Reads Across America template that can be used. Um, it can be, um, well, of course it can be used, that's why it's there for you guys, but it can also be edited. Um, and it also, and then the send message, it acts similar to a blank email. It can be customized however you would like it. Um, pretty much any template that we have, it's able to be customized. We just kind of put it in there. So if you're not really sure what to say, you can kind of quickly and easily go in. We kind of have it all built for you. And there's usually a place right in there that kind of says like insert your text here where you can just put a personal message to them. Um, so especially if it's a donor um, that you know, and you, you know, ask them like, hey, support our group, and you see their name on there, they went on, and they sponsored a wreath, it's a great idea to go in there, hit that send thank you button, and, you know, let them know like, hey, thanks so much, I saw you, you know, sponsor that wreath, we really appreciate that. Um, and it's quick and easy, and it will update, it'll let you know when that message actually um, sent. I know some of you on here right now may be say, asking about that. Um, it is, it's just about 24 to 48 hours behind on updating those send thank yous right now. That was just because we had this really big messaging release. So it's just a little sluggish, um, but that should be up and running as normal, where as soon as you hit that send thank you, it instantly updates to show you that the thank you was sent. Um, that should be back to normal tomorrow. Um, so typically, if once you hit that, it's going to immediately say sent thank you. For those of you who have sent those and you haven't seen those updated, it has sent. Please give it some time and it'll show that it was um, sent. You don't need to keep redoing that. So next, next, let's talk about some of the ways that we can message volunteers. Communicating with registered volunteers will help your event run more smoothly on National Reads Across America Day. Volunteers want to know where to be, when to be there, and what is involved as a volunteer. Any other um, pertinent information about the event at your location is also something you want to share. Um, you know, parking, where to pick up grade specific. These are all great ways that we've seen people use this messaging to let people know what to expect. Um, registered volunteers may not realize that they can make a sponsorship as well as help place wreaths. So messaging them is a great way to help them understand but the wreaths are all community funded through sponsorships and to ask for their support. You can message past and present volunteers through the messaging module or to share information and encourage them to sponsor. Or you can contact them with a customizable template through the event scheduling if you're sending bulk in bulk or in event participants if you want to contact a specific individual. So to send messages, um, in event scheduling, we're, we're really excited that we're able to get, give you guys multiple ways that you can reach out to these volunteers. To message all the volunteers about wreath day events or plans, you will use one of three customizable templates available under event scheduling. And these are the same templates that are also available under um, 
the event participants. And you're going to have recent registration, which you're going to use these if you want to recent registration information. Uh, send reminder. This is what you probably want to send it a week or two prior to the event just to share important information. Um, again, parking, maybe there's been an update, you're expecting some weather. This is a great tool to use um, that to remind people where to be, when to be there. And then send journal message. And this is just using, use that to um, share specific information for your weekday plans at any time um, that you want to send it. Um, each message can be customized, like we talked about earlier. Um, when you, if you click on, nope, use system default, this isn't, um, it's going to just send the default message. It's not going to customize anything. You can also opt to check, yes, save this message for all my events. And that is where if you customize that message, you can click, you want to save that for any event that you are having um, for some of our larger locations. You know, they may have it split out uh, where they have to stagger Reese because they don't have enough parking or whatever. And then that's going to save it for all of those across. So you don't have to go in and retype those messages. Or you can say yes for this event only. And this is going to save it only for that message event that you are in. And so if you have different instructions for people that are going to be there at different times. Um, this is a great way that you can kind of save that message um, to send again later as you need to, as new people come on board, but just saving it for that one event. All right, now I'm going to do, uh, show you guys a quick little video and um, it goes a little fast. I was having some trouble formatting it to go a little slower. So I'm going to try to pause it as I can. So y'all just bear with me. <laughs> um, we're just going to show you guys a quick little tutorial on how you can actually send those messages through um, event scheduling in the system. So first you're going to go up to the manage tab. Oh, off to a great start, guys. Went to right to a whole nother tab. All right, so first you're gonna to go to the Manage tab, and then you're gonna click on Event Scheduling. Once there, here you can see your events. And um, this is just a local one here that we've got pulled up, and I don't have any, there's no one that's registered for it right now. Um, but this is where you would see all the information regarding that event. If you have more than one event, if you're a larger location, um, or you just have it split out for, you know, you want to have people come in a ceremony or for a replaying, all the events would show up right here. To send a message, you're going to click on that, those three little dots. Anytime you see those three little dots, you can pretty much bet you can click on them and see a menu of some options of cool things that you can do. So here you're going to see you've got that send general message, send reminder, and recent registration, those templates that we just talked about. So here also you can see where we are, you know, you can check if you want to use system default or which where how you want to save those. And you're going to want to, when you click on them, then you can go in here and you can actually start typing to, um, you know, customize this personal message. You can erase all of this stuff if you want. If you do see this stuff in these little brackets, those are called wildcards. Those are ones that we don't, um, oh, well, clicking on the wrong thing there. Um, those are ones that we don't want to necessarily take out. Um, because they will automatically pull in information regarding your event or your location page, group page, however. And you click that send message and it's going to send away. And that's it. Super easy. It's just a few little clicks. Now, if you want to send messages to individual volunteers on a one by one basis, perhaps, you know, maybe someone has said that they are, you know, bringing. 40 people with them and you have a cemetery of 10 graves and you're like, are you really bringing 40 people or is that a typo? You know, you may want to message them to say, hey, I'm just confirming, do you actually have 40 people? We only, you know, this, we only have 10 graves here or, you know, just confirming for whatever reason. You are going to go to that same manage tab and you're gonna go down and click on event participants. And from there, you can filter this down um, to, you'll see there's dates, 
like here you can see it's 2020. I just, we pulled this up today, but it's got, you know, people from back in 2020 that volunteered. You can um, message people from previous years <clears throat> or you can filter it down for just those who have registered for 2023. You can uh, filter it for people who registered for a specific event if you have multiple events or you can search for names, however you want to do it. There's many different options. And if you need more information on, um, you know, how you can use that for filter, we will have um, some more tutorials coming out around this. Um, and I think we could go into a little bit more detail in our dashboard dashboard tutorial that we have available on our volunteer resource page. And of course, the liaisons are always um, there to help you guys with specifics that you may have around it. Um, so here, again, you're going to click on those three little dots next to the one that you want to send the message to. You just pick which message you want to send, uh, type in what you need to say, and hit send, and um, <clears throat> it's on its way. All right, so now let's talk about our new messaging dashboard. I know you all have been very patiently waiting for this, and we're super excited with the improvement, not just on what you guys are seeing, but also what's going on behind the scenes. Um, so last year, you know, we had some issues, the pesky little issues with some messages not going out for a couple days because the server was running behind. So one of the biggest improvements to this that you guys aren't seeing is the... Um, um, server upgrade that was done on the back end so that we do not run into that anymore. So we're very excited about that. And it's going to just allow you guys to send those messages out a little bit faster um, during season and crunch time when we know that those messages, it's so important to get those out as quickly as we, as can, we can. So there are six different sections to this messaging module. You have Compose Message, which is where you can write a message to send or save it as a draft for later. We have Draft Messages. This is where you can view all the drafts that you've saved. Scheduled Messages. This is where you'll view messages that you have scheduled to send at a later date. And Sent Messages. This is where you'll view all the messages that you've sent and also that are sending. So if you click on, you know, especially for some of the larger locations, if you've got 2,000 um, messages that are going out, you know, it is going to take a few minutes for that to go out, um, you know, maybe an hour, depending on the time of year, if the system is a little bit busier. So this will also show you those that have been sent and are actively sending, and it's going to um, give you a status of, of where they're at with that sending. Uh, we also have the My Contacts, and this is where you can upload your own contacts to message um, for support. And then we also have um, sponsors and volunteers messaging. And this is where you can write a message to past and current year sponsors and volunteers. And you can access the same ones in the composed message. Um, we just made it a little bit easier for you guys to specifically target messages to sponsors and volunteers. It's got the templates that you would need for those um, audiences already programmed in there for you guys. <clears throat> And now we've got another little video and this one's a little bit longer and a little bit slower. So um, we're gonna kind of walk through some of the different features um, on this new messaging. So you can access this under the promote um, menu option or you can scroll down to your messaging button. There's a bug flying in my office, I apologize. Um, to start off, you can click on that compose message and here, this is this first one sent from, that's where you are gonna want to, if you are a location coordinator and a group leader, perhaps you have a managed page too, or a member page too, this is where you wanna make sure you're picking who you're sending that message from. So if you are trying to send a message out to get people to sponsor REITs and you are a location coordinator group leader, you wanna make sure that you are picking that group page because if you click the location page, any links in there are just gonna take them to the location page so your group would not get credit for any reads that were sponsored through that link. So here we've got, I've clicked it, I've made sure I've changed it to my group so that I get credit. You can pick your sender there. And this is if you have um, multiple page owners 
Um, this is where you can kind of pick if you want it to come from, if you're, say you're the co-location coordinator, but you want to send out specific events, um, information about the replaying event, but you want it to come from the location coordinator. This is where you can kind of choose that, who that's going to come from. Next, you're going to pick your um, send to. And this is where you kind of can see you've got sponsors or volunteers from all years, sponsors and volunteers from past years, um, current year, um, group members, and then my contacts. Um, if you are doing it from your location page, you're also going to have, instead of the same group members, it's going to say um, your group. So your sponsorship groups, that's how you can message your sponsorship groups. If you're doing this as a group, then you have the opportunity to send this to your group member pages that you may have. So next you're gonna pick your target audience. So this is, you know, sponsors, volunteers. Um, obviously now I wanna pick, am I doing it to, am I sending it to all um, my sponsors and volunteers? just my sponsors or just my volunteers. So I've picked them sending it to my sponsors. Next, you're going to hit, um, you're, you're going to hit next, and then you're going to go over to pick your template. And here we, right now we only have one template. This is just our simple template um, to get us started. As we go over the next couple of weeks, you might see some more templates come in there um, that are more, you know, reminders of a cutoff that you guys can send out to your groups um, or group members. Um, but for now, you're just going to pick this one because then we can edit it to, to be whatever you need it to be. So another cool feature here is you can pick if you want this to go um, email, um, text message, or if you want to do both. So we're going to go with both. So we now we're going to go here and we're going to type our message in um, again any of this can be edited you just want to make sure if you take out you know this recipient name um, section then it's not going to pull someone's name in automatically um, also if you opt to do a email and a text message there is those two places for that um, for you to click on that the messaging piece so you want to make sure you type change the message in your email and then also in the text message um, box as well. That one is, of course, um, let me back it up here. You can see right here, this does say, because we obviously can't fit all of this information into a text message. So it's just gonna have more information where it's gonna click and take them to their page. So you wanna make sure you're having a lot of your information on your page as well, as far as you know, replaying and all that. Um, you can also uh, include an attachment by toggling that attachment button. Sorry, I wasn't fast enough on slides. Um, right here, you see that include attachments toggle. You're going to do that and click next. And then you click on new attachments. And you can either upload a photo that you've already got added, or you can um, click on that plus sign and upload one. We're gonna pick this super cute little kid here and save that. And that is going to come through as an attachment to the email, not in like the email itself. It'll be as an attachment. So next we can um, send, this is where you can send a test. So the really cool thing about this test email is you can send this to whatever email you have. So if you're like, nope, that's not the email I want it. I don't, I don't check that email that often. I want to test sending to this email or I want to send it to someone else for them to check. You can, um, you know, change that right here on the spot and just type that in. You can also, I do recommend that you put in a, um, a cell phone so that you can test that text message out. Um, and then you're going pretty much any format here will work. If you put dashes, no dashes, if you, you know, put parentheses around the area code, um, any of those formats are going to work here. And then you're going to click on um, send test. And it's going to come through to your email. And unlike some of our in the past where those tests were not always did not always work. I have been testing this out for many, many days and I have 
tons of test messages in my inbox. So um, it is working. It's, it's really cool that um, you guys can see those that you're, you know, to make sure that you don't miss anything. Is the attachment coming through okay? Um, and just making sure that everything's lining up right. Another um, thing that we have here now is you've got the send or schedule message. So you can either save this as a draft right here. If you're like, well, I think I got it all. I want to have someone else look it over or I need to get some more information and come back later. You can click save as this draft and it's going to you know, go to your draft section. You can also um, click send later and schedule it to go at a later date or you can send it now. So if you choose to um, send it later, you're gonna, it's gonna pull up this wonderful little calendar with a time. Um, and this is a great way that you can kind of schedule some stuff to go out when we're all gonna be a little bit busier as reminders of what time to be there for replaying or um, you know reminders for the cutoff date to make sure people get their um, sponsorships in on time. And there's no limit to how many you have scheduled to send later. So it's a really good opportunity to schedule all of those out now when you have a little bit of downtime before we all start going a little crazy. So next we have, so that's our message. So if we'd hit send now, it would that it would have gone. Um, if we decided we wanted to save it for a draft, we're gonna, now we can go in here to our drafts and you can see all the draft messages that I've got here. Um, you can open it, you can click on it, edit it. Um, and then you can also, if I'm like, okay, well, I don't actually need this one anymore. We can get out of there and you can click on those three right dots and you can delete that message. And I do, oh, was it? Um, on this dashboard here, when we get back to this main dashboard, Um, where you can see these numbers here. This is gonna tell you how many messages you have there. So right now we have three messages that we've composed. I've got three in my drafts. I have two that are um, scheduled to send later and I've sent three. So we're gonna go into schedule messages and this is um, you know, very similar to the other ones you've got you can see your message here you can see um, you've chosen this one we we're sending it um, email and text and this one is just going out via email it's going to tell you the number of recipients um i obviously don't have a lot here because this is just a page that i'm testing stuff out with <laughs> um, and it's going to tell you when it was composed and what it's when it's scheduled to go so i had this message it's scheduled to go out november 28th and i have another one scheduled to go out december 1st you can change these at any time just like with the other messages you can click on them open them edit them change that schedule date if you decide you want to send it out at a different date um, you can change the text in there you can change the audience any of the stuff that you need to you can always um, update that Next, we're gonna to go to our sent messages. So this is where you're gonna see the messages that have been sent and that are also um, scheduled to go out. So it's gonna kind of tell you um, when it was sent, how many recipients were on it. Um, it's going to let you know what the uh, delivered rate was. So this one it had two recipients, two were delivered, one was opened. So I currently have 50% um, right. I'm pretty sure it was my aunt. My aunt. She was also on that email. She's one of the recipients, and I'm going to get on to her because I think she was the one that didn't open it. So she needs to support me a little bit more. Um, so then you can also see along the bottom there um, that there is a kind of a running total as well. So you can kind of see how your emails are doing and see like maybe what, some emails are doing better than others, and maybe there's things that you can do to change that text of how you're going to communicate with. Um, people to get a better response. And it does tell you the time it was sent. Um, so you can kind of see, you know, when when that was, you know, you don't want to message people every day, you want to give them a little break in between, <laughs> but it's good to kind of keep up with that open communication as we get into season. So next you can look at your contacts. So here you can either um, add contacts individually um, and again, this is just people that maybe you want to address, have them, you know, send them a message so that they can sponsor a wreath. 
you can type that um, in right here. You can, the only thing that's required is the email. You can leave everything else blank. But of course, the more information you have in here, the more you can customize those messages. It's going to pop right up. Um, and then you can also click on the upload template and you can upload several at once using a spreadsheet. Um, and then next we've got our sponsors and volunteer section. And again, this is very similar to the compose message. Um, you've still got your, your pages. You wanna pick if it's the group page or the location page. Um, you wanna pick who is actually sending that message. And um, you can also copy sender Um, here by toggling this. And what that's going to do is the, when the message goes out, it's going to also copy the person here in the sender section is going to get a copy of that email. Um, so you can do that. Or if you send a test message, you may not necessarily need a copy. Um, but I know some people like to have that just so that they can confirm like, oh, yep, it went out. I've got it. So I know other people have also gotten it as well. So you're going to pick that audience again. And so the difference here is it's just kind of, you know, drilled in um, as we add more templates. Right now, there's not that many, so it's a little bit easier. But as we add more, it's just going to be a quicker way for you guys to message those sponsors and volunteers without having to search through some of the other messages that we have. So again, you're going to type your message there. Make sure that you're customizing that for what you need it to be. Click next. You can send that test message if you need to, and you can save it as a draft, send it later, or you can send it now. And that is messaging dashboard in a nutshell, guys. So now I know that there's probably lots of questions because that's a lot of information. And again, we are going to have this available for download. You guys can watch this again at any time. Um, on, it'll be available on the volunteer resource page by the end of the week. Um, we'll also have some new updated um, tutorials going out around the specific messaging. Um, and again, if your regional liaisons are always going to be a great resource for you guys as you're kind of learning how to use some of the some of the new features on here. Uh, so we will go ahead and um, if you have a question, you can you know go ahead and uh, raise your hand um, or unmute, and we can just dive right in. Brenda Kaysler, you are that was fast. You were ready. <laughs> I was ready. I was waiting. I just want to say thank you to you and Megan and all y'all because um, you're, I, it's obvious that you've been really working very, very hard on this and, and making it as easy as possible as you can for us. And, and I just want you to know, probably speaking from everybody, we really appreciate it. Well, thank you. appreciate that. I, there has been a lot of blood, sweat, tears, and some curse words that have been used in getting this developed. So we're, we're very excited to finally have it released to you guys. So. Hi, Tom? I have a question. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was just going to say, I missed it the first eight minutes. What website is this I need to go to? This is right in your manage pages. So when you signed up, you should have had a link in there for where you can log into your dashboard. And it's all right in there. If you're not, if you don't have that link, you can um, reach out to your regional liaisons and they can help you get that login information and the link where you need to go. Okay, so... And one of the liaisons right, may be able to drop that dashboard link in the chat. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay, Tom Kelly, you got your hand raised? Yeah, hi, uh, thanks so much. Uh, could you do a quick review on sending a message to last year's uh, online donors? Because those mm -hmm. are the only ones that I know that have uh, their email uh, addresses attached. So, so you can actually, yep, yeah, you can send it to um, the, let's see if I can fast forward here a little bit, to the um, under compose message, if you go there. Um, and let's see, make sure you pick your pages and all that. We're going to fast forward over to the template. And so when you click this into, what you want to do is you want to click on um, past years. 
So mm -hmm. you'll click on um, sponsor and volunteers for past year. This is not all years, this, this is just the past year. And then once you do, um, we click that. This is a video, so just pretend I picked past years, not all years. And then here you'll click that, it's where you drill down to, you wanna click sponsors. Um, not your volunteers, you'll just click your sponsors. And that's how you can send that message to um, past year, last year's um, donors. You can also go into the um, research orders. Let me see if I can pop back over there. So when you go into the research orders, you can search by reef year as well. And this is, this would not send, um, if you want, this would be like a one on, like one in email at a time, not send it in bulk. Okay. But so you could go in and you the could filter. The uh, group mail. Yeah. So the message. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank yep. you so much. You're welcome. All right, Matthew, you've got your hand raised. Thanks. Appreciate it. So been a location coordinator for a couple of years and picking up a, a group sponsorship coordinator. Am, am I required to have a separate login um, to my dashboard or is there a way, or once I'm logged in, I can do both functions? Yep. So once you are, as long as it's the same email address that you gave, like when you signed up as the group leader and the location coordinator, as long as it's the same email address um, given to the regional liaisons, it will all be linked up. If it's not, you can reach out to them and they can help make sure that it's all under the same login, but it would all be. So when we, when I was showing that video where you had to pick the page, that's because that was me logged into a page where I was, I have a group, I have a location and I had two member pages. So it's all gonna be under one login as long as it's the same email address. And that way you can kind of see and pick and choose. You just gotta make sure that whenever you're sending messages, you always check that sender and make sure it's coming from the page that you want it to come from. That makes great sense. Thank you for the clarification. You're welcome. All right, um, Cindy Greer, cause there's got two Cindy's with their hands up. So, Cindy Greer, do you want to go ahead? Uh, yes, I'm a first time um, sponsor, uh, group leader, I guess you would say. Um, and my, I have two questions. Um, my treasurer is um, also watching this. And is there a specific um, part on the dashboard that would be really good for her to study? and um, regarding the monies and all of that stuff. And the second part is this um, program that you shared today seems mostly for location coordinators, just from what I'm, my basic knowledge. Am I right in that? So the event management piece and event participant um, emailing messaging part that we showed that is more directed for location coordinators but the rest of it is all stuff that you know groups can use as well a lot of times groups share information as far as the location goes um, you know to get more people to come out to help um, support and sponsor reefs so it, it really kind of goes both way both ways that's the only part that is specifically for location coordinators um, as far as uh, for the treasurer I would recommend going to the um, reporting section and there you can go to the reef count report and you can see um, kind of running numbers of where you got for reefs for this year. You can also click into the details to see um, sponsorships for um, in, like the information, the names, you can see the sponsors names as long as they can, you know, come through your group. Um, you can see the number of reefs that were sponsored and it has um, all the different years as well. So you can check the different years to, to view, to see kind of where, where you're at this year compared to last year. So, um, and if, I would recommend if she hasn't looked at it, um, the dashboard tutorial that is on the volunteer resource page is a great, it's, I mean, it's kind of long. It's like, I don't know, 40, 50 pages. I feel like every time I go to look, we've added something else to it, but it's just because there's so much information and so many things to know, um, but you can check out that and it will has, tells you all about how to read your read count report and how to look through research orders and really kind of, you know, get down to that piece of it. Okay, and um, my final, uh, I have one more question. Mm -hmm. So um, are the location that our reeds are gonna go to is Riverside National Cemetery. 
so they will be using your messaging to get a hold of me. Is that how it works? Um, that's what we encourage them to do. Now, every location coordinator is a little different, you know, they handle things a little differently. Um, but we do, you know, share with them that we ask them to reach out to you guys. Um, but you can also reach out to them too. You know, you can okay. go, go to that contact page, you know, contact that button, or you can reach out to your regional liaison and they can put you in touch with them. Um, if it's something you want to say like, Hey, how can I help? How can we get involved? Um, there. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. The other Cindy. Hi, Julie. My question is, because I have a larger location, let's say the first of the end of September, I send out volunteer information on those that have volunteered. So the first of October, I have a whole new listing of volunteers that have signed up. Does it auto-populate to show me those newer um, volunteers that have signed up? How does that work in the messaging system to show up for us? So if you have, um, as of right now, the only template we've got is going to send, if you put all volunteers, it's going to go out to okay. all volunteers. But Correct. that is something that we have talked about um, in trying to see if we can build that into one of our templates. Okay. Um, just depends on how quick I can get Logan to help me build that out. But <laughs> he's okay. on this call too. So no pressure, Logan. <laughs> um, but that might be something that we can get up this year where it would say if they have, if you have, they haven't already been messaged. Um, but as for now, it's going to be all of them or you can go into that um, event participants. And of course that's going to be one-on-one, -on -one, which I would not recommend for a larger location. Okay, so if I go in the next month and it's been 30 days, it's going to send in, as of right now, it's going to send that out to all volunteers and duplicate that first section that I, I sent to, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Rebecca, you got your hand raised? Yes, I do. I have a couple of questions. Um, the first one, I am a new site coordinator, so I'm really green and I'm having a hard time feeling my way through all this. But the first question uh, deals with, um, I've gone in and looked at all of the sponsor groups that have attached to my site. And two of them appear to be corporate groups, which I can see no information. When I do one of these messages and have it sent to all of those in my in my site location, are they going to get them too, or will they not get anything from me, but only from corporate? No, as long as they are registered um, as a sponsorship group for your location, and you send a message out to all the sponsorship groups, they're going to get that as well too. And usually, it's because they want to. Um, you know, we have a lot of our corporate groups that they, you know, they want to be a part of helping you guys locally, um, attending the ceremony. So it's great to include them as well, so they can kind of see where you're at as far as what you may need for wreath sponsorships, um, and also, you know, what wreath day plans are, so that they can. Uh, um, attend and help um, volunteer to place those wreaths. Okay. So and if you are, you. there's a lot of information here. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, don't just call your liaison and say, Hey, help me out. Walk me through this because this is a lot of information. I felt a little overwhelmed as well as I was setting this all up. Okay. Yeah. They're on speed dial. Um, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> my second question has to do with I'm a site loca uh, location coordinator. Uh, I'm also an active member of a sponsor group. That's how I got involved in this in the first place. They are asking if I will be the group leader or chair, uh, committee chair or whatever. Would that be construed as a conflict of interest or is that okay? That is okay. Um, we have a lot of people who are group leaders and the location coordinator. That's where we kind of talked about that communication policy at the beginning. The biggest thing is we ask is kind of an honor system. We don't want location coordinators to, um, because location coordinators can see all the wreaths that are sponsored from all the groups. Um, anything that comes under that location, they can see all the information. A sponsorship group, you guys, they can only see what comes in through that specific sponsorship group. So for location coordinators, if a if sponsorships have come in um, and you're sending out a message about wreath, wreath day plans or whatever, you don't necessarily want to include your specific group information because it, you're sending it out to 
everyone who has supported other groups as well. Um, and you don't want to seem like you're stealing people away from other people. <laughs> uh, so that's just something, it's just to be kind of aware of that. And again, if you are you know unsure, you can also reach out to your groups and say like, hey, I want to send this message out. Does anybody have any concerns? Um, or you can reach out to your regional liaison and they can help you with that too. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Mark, you've got your hand raised. Oh, you're muted. Oh, there we go. Um, <laughs> sorry to say I had to text my kids to figure out how to raise my hand. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, some people just do like this too, you know, <laughs> so it works. <laughs> yeah, um, computers and Zoom is not my thing. Um, uh, I'm just overwhelmed. Location coordinator and sponsorship coordinator. Um, I have, um, since Friday, not been able to send out thank yous. And, um, you know, I thought maybe they're going out, but I'm just not receiving the, you know, the send thank you to thank you message. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just checked with a sponsor from this past Friday, and they the only thank you they received was uh, from the help desk. Um, so I'm not quite sure what to do with that. Uh, and, you know, quite frankly, I, I just met with a group of um, uh, Vietnam vets earlier today. And and a lot of us, I hate to say it, older folks are just overwhelmed by all the computer technology. Uh, I just placed an order myself in, in honor of my dad for 20 reads, expecting that I was getting the matching through my group. And I did not. Uh, call me over. So you won't see. So and and then that's and it's okay because there's a lot of information here. The thing to keep in mind is the tools that are in this the manage page. That those are just resources for you guys to use if you want to. There's there's nothing that's required of you to use. If you're like, hey, I want to send a message out, but I'm not really sure how to do it. You can send that what you want to send to your liaisons and they are happy to send that out for you. Um, you know, we are here to help you guys through this. We don't expect everyone to figure this out on their own overnight because it's a lot of information. Um, as far as um, the three for two. So when if you sponsored it through your group page, as long as you went through your group page or you're in, on your receipt, um, when you checked out, it should have had your group on there. As long as it shows your group ID on there, then you get the three for two credit. Um, uh, it won't show like on the receipt. It doesn't show like a third wreath, like being added. That is added once the sponsorship goes through our system. When you go into your wreath count report, that is where you would see it would added was added. And if it if your group ID is not on that receipt or if you're not sure. Um, reach out to your regional liaison with that order number. We can look into it. We can get a correction in for you to make sure that that's fixed for you. Um, and we can troubleshoot to see what what link you clicked on and just make sure we get you to the right place. So going forward, you don't have any other issues. All right. I, I guess I just have a hard time with it because I don't understand it. So I don't know how to explain it to somebody else. So I, mm -hmm. I guess I just need to speak with Emily or Tara uh, tomorrow. Oh, morning. yeah. Yeah. You give them a call and they're going to like just say, OK, help me out. Walk me through all this. They'll and they can kind of, you know, do a little bit more one on one because um, it, it seems like a lot. But it's, you know, pretty simple when we get to the bare bones of it. It can be as simple or as complicated as you make. And like I said, these are tools that you can use. You do not have to use them. If you're like, I don't want to do that. I just want to do this. They can show you how to do that and they can walk you through that. And as far as the thank you messages, um, I will check on that. Like I said, they weren't, the status wasn't updating, but if they weren't going out, um, if you tell, get with Tara and Emily tomorrow and we can just check on that because some of that was affected by this big release that we did. And so, you know, anytime you do a big release, there's always a few little things um, and we're still ironing in that out. So we'll get that up and running within the next 24 hours. Thank you. You're welcome. And thanks for your patience and, and good luck <laughs> and hang in there. <laughs> All right, David, you've got your hand raised. David, are you still there? There you go. <laughs> I think everybody just froze on me. I'm not sure if uh, everything's working yeah, all right. Were, 
I can't, we can hear you now. You were definitely frozen on us, but go for it. Oh, I think you froze up again. Oh, am I back? Yep, you're back. It was going fine up until I have my turn to talk. <laughs> If you want to, you can always um, drop your question in the chat if you're having trouble um, with that signal and I can um, check in there and we can try to answer that too. I'm going to hop over to someone else and we'll come back to oh. David in a second. Here. Are you there? Yep. Okay. I think, I think I'm stable now. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, that's a David. Uh, David, I'm a uh, San Marcos, Texas uh this is not my first year being involved with Race Across America. Uh, as far as I started off in Houston, uh, just observing the uh, ceremonies, and I moved to San Marcos, which is, uh, for some people who don't know, that's about 30 miles south of Austin, Texas. Uh, okay. and everything. And this is, my, this is my first time actually being this fall. I kind of got cornered by my veterans group then to be the group person i brought the idea to them and like yeah you can be the group and i was like okay <laughs> uh but my question is uh when uh, I, I presume when you when you get a new uh uh sponsorship because we've uh i'm also on the veteran affairs advisory committee with the city of san marcos so mm -hmm. it's kind of a twofer and so our group uh i'm getting kind of like with lisa or she's our coordinator our uh, local court, I guess our location coordinator. And I want to know is when our veterans group, because we're doing the group thing, uh, when we get a new sponsor, uh, I presume we'll get a notification via email or do, or do the messaging system when they uh, jump on as a when sponsor someone, and how many reads they sponsor? Um, yep. So no, we don't do that right now because some of our larger locations that get, you know, 20,000 reads, they would get a little upset with us if they got an email every time someone sponsored a race. Um, so, <laughs> though we do not, we don't have that turned on. So what you can do though, is you can access your dashboard at any time. And when you go to that dashboard, you can log into your, um, the, go to your reporting section. We have that wreath count report kind of talked about earlier. Um, and it will actually, um, you can see who the sponsors names and you can kind of get, see how many wreaths they sponsored. You can also view that in the research orders, which is actually what's up on the screen right now, where you can kind of search and um, filter down to see those individual orders there. Um, and then another place where you can you can see a live um, movement of sponsorships that you have coming in is on your group page. So that reads across America.org forward slash and then your group ID. When you go there, you've got that rethometer that colors in every time a new wreath sponsorship comes in. So that's live. That's a great way to kind of see where you're at with wreath sponsorships at any time. Um, keep in mind that that is live, but the reporting, the wreath count report, it is not live. It is updated every night. Um, so it's usually, if you go on if sponsor wreath and you see it update on your public page, you're not going to see that reflected in your wreath count report until the following day, um, just because it's updated. It's about 3 a.m. every night that it's usually the update goes through. Um, for anybody who wants to watch it really closely update, um, I recommend just checking in the next morning because 3 a.m. is a little early. Okay, yeah, thanks. Yeah, this will, uh, like I said, my first time. So kind of like uh, the other gentleman was talking about, uh, I'm kind of a tech person. So if you were kind of like, if I was to flip the camera, you'll see my computer with three monitors. So I'm kind of like yeah. a, computer nerd is but when my first time doing stuff like this i'm kind of bit on like there's a whole lot of information coming at me so that's one thing what i was kind of inquiring about so i don't but thanks for answering my question so basically it's like i won't get an automatic update but you know basically like do it like every other night check or just something like that yeah yeah you can do me time there all right thank you you're welcome all right uh mary lou you got your hand raised Okay, I have a question. I'm a, we've got a brand new cemetery, a new look, and I'm new to location. But when I called, I told them we also, we, we spot, 
we take care of an old cemetery that's less than a mile away from the cemetery we're going to. And there's only four graves there. The last veteran's grave was in the uh, 1860s during the rebel, during the Civil War. And actually, the, there are two Civil War veterans in there. Well, today, when I was filling out that form, because I'm brand new, and it said, I agree. I signed it, but I may have lied because it says you're not supposed to take a wreath from one grave to the other. But when I asked to do the new location, I told them about our preservation of this cemetery because we clean the cemetery stones and we're uh, repairing the ones that are broken. And they told me I could take four wreaths from one to the other. But today when I signed that thing, it says you're not supposed to. But I asked before when I, so and I don't want to get in trouble. Yeah. So, I mean, I, it sounds like there, you know, might be some, you can, if it's, are you taking Reese from like one of your, one location to another? Yes. Location? I'm a location. We've got enough. Uh, we told them exactly how many veterans we have, because we already put flags out there four times a year. So we told them that, but I, at that time, I told them about our other cemetery, the, the old one, it's old. There's nobody else ever going to be able to be in there. And it was a family one. And we take care of it for the family because they live two hours away. So I asked for four extra wreaths and they told me it was okay. And they were going to send those. And then today when I'm filling out that form, it says, you're not supposed to do that. But yeah, is so that okay? yeah, it is okay. So what it is, is we just don't want people, like we wouldn't want a sponsorship girl going to a cemetery and saying, oh, I'm going to take these wreaths over to this other cemetery without communicating and making those plans ahead of time. So yes, have they know because they told me that we would include that in my count because yeah. there's only four veterans in there and two of them are revolution and two are uh, during the civil war. So it's we not have a like, lot of lo yeah, we have a lot of location coordinators who do something similar because, you know, there's a lot of small cemeteries like that out there and, you know, it doesn't, you know, necessarily for them to have the the manpower to have ceremonies at every single one of those so instead what they'll do is they'll have you know one ceremony here and maybe they take those wreaths and place them otherwhere so that's completely fine just make sure that they have communicated that with um their the liaison and um you can always check with your regional liaison as too because we kind of keep track of all that on our side just so that way um if anyone were to ever you know well, when we ask to get the new location because nobody's ever had Reese where we're going this year for the first time and I'm the location person I asked specifically that we could do this and they told me yes yeah so yeah. I, I just fine. don't want to have because you know you yeah. sign all that stuff and I just don't want to get myself in trouble yeah then uh, my treasurer asked a second question mm -hmm. okay because we've already sold 22 Reese and we just got this new location like this month but she wanted to know how the $5 works. Do we get the whole $5 back? Because we've done this with a bigger cemetery and we never get $5. You get like so many dollars and so many cents. So it's never an equal $5. And she asked me and I have no clue. So it should be um, $5 for every read. Sometimes it rounds up differently depending on like how the money was sent in. Um, but for without looking at it, I mean, I could, you know, Given I mean, we get cents, and it's like I, I would, and, so, and they're not mul and they're not multiples of five. So we couldn't decide if you took taxes out or well, what. We, we don't. So I would definitely just I would recommend reaching out to your regional liaison. And what they can do is they can look at that and they can tell you why that may be. Um, you know, and so just because without me looking into it right now, um, I don't really have the information to answer that. But reach out to your regional liaisons and they can they can get you guys all the information you need on that. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Robin, you got your hand raised. Hi, I just have a real quick question. I think I know the answer, but I just want to confirm it. So in 2022, our and it was our first year, 2022 was our first um, year of doing reads across America in the location and with the group. As our group, we manage the group page as well as the location page. Now this year we have divided it out and it, it I manage the group page, like the club, our club that sponsors, but not the location. Two other people handle the location. So when I'm doing this new messaging and I'm sending it to, I'm assuming only the group um, 
donors or sponsors. Mm -hmm. Anybody that has sponsored through the location page, I will not have access to. Is that correct? That would be correct. Now, if you're still working with them, they can request to have you added as a page owner to that page. So that way you could still help the send the messaging out. Like if that's what you're going to be doing, working alongside them, um, they would just need to contact the regional liaison and that can, they could do that. Okay. Otherwise they're on their own and doing yeah. any messaging through. I think the bulk is through our group, but I think we will miss, a, you know, a lot of sponsors not mm -hmm. having access and I'm not sure they're willing to share the access. So that's just a little logistical thing. Yeah. But and thank you. Something where you just, when you write up a message that you could send it to them and say, hey, we just sent this message out to our sponsors. You guys may want to consider sending it out to your people as well. True. Okay. That's a good idea. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Keith, you've got your hand raised. You guys are yep. a little bit patient. We've had lots of people. <clears throat> had to unmute. Um. I had a, we had our American Legion meeting last night and they're one of my sponsorship groups. And my, and my contact said that he was told by the, the uh, American Legion writers motorcycle group that there was a security concern that um, because people didn't like what we were doing and that they were going to have to start doing more security have you heard anything about that at all because i told them security for I, a specific location or well he they didn't give me that much detail he just asked I, if i had heard of it and i said i had not so i and, wanted since we're having the meeting tonight i figured i'd ask yeah no i mean i have not heard anything and i i would like to think that i would have heard something i would be someone who would have heard that if something was going yep. on <laughs> I kind of figured you would have, so. There's no, um, I mean, of course, every location, you know, every area that each location is in is a little bit different. Um, and, but to my knowledge, there's been no concerns about anything going on at any of the locations. All right. I'll ask, I'll ask him if he can get some more details from the guys and it just could be something yeah, local. Yeah, you can send that so. on. Like, that's something, you know, we can definitely look into. And if there ever was, it would definitely be something that we would communicate with everybody. Okay. And then one quick thing, uh, I use Find a Grave mm -hmm. to, I'm documenting and uh, creating a spreadsheet with all my veterans because the um, my cemetery goes back to 1759. Mm -hmm. So the office has no idea how many veterans they have or where they're at. So I'm actually going through. I suggested to Find a Grave um, about six or eight months ago that there's no way of finding veterans on their page. They have added a toggle switch on there. So if anybody uses find a grave, they can go in, suggest an edit, and they will add a V next to the person's name. So like if you're wanting to look for veterans in a particular cemetery, you find a cemetery, you click on one of the filters, and it'll only bring up the veterans oh, awesome. uh, on, on find a grave. So it's it's making my job a little bit easier because a lot of families are going in and doing, you know, they're on their own. And I'm when I'm doing my spreadsheet, I go in and suggest the edit. So just something if somebody's using find a grave, that's there to uh, help somebody else in the future. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing. We actually um, Rochelle, um, our finance liaison, she'll be excited about that because she uses that to find um, graves for if we get grave specific words that come in that maybe is missing information, she tries to help find that. So that's a great tool to have and will something that I'll definitely look into and see if maybe we can share that on the webinar next month when we talk about the grave specific report. I think that's great to be able to, great resource yeah, to be I'm, able to show those people. I've got about 850 veterans at, in the cemetery. Um, but I'm up to about 300 on my spreadsheets. <laughs> I still have a few, few to go. If somebody wants to volunteer. 
Well, that's awesome. So, I, I think that's great. That's all. Thank you very much to do that. So, um, all right. If no, because it's after nine o'clock, guys, and I'm tired. Um, but if anybody, nobody else has any other questions, we're going to go ahead and call that a night. Um, if you do, you better get your hand up there quick or pop up and say something. Um, I don't think I, um, liaisons. If is there anything in the chat that needs to be answered, or is everything pretty much been good? Okay, perfect. All right. Well, thank you guys all for your time tonight. Um, you know, I know it was a lot of information. Again, if you are feeling overwhelmed, if you have questions, if you're not sure about something that we talked about, um, reach out to your regional liaisons. They're there to help you. Um, we also have on the volunteer resource page, a wealth of information, the dashboard tutorial and lots of other things, um, including this recorded webinar that will be posted up there by the end of the week. So you guys can go back and rewatch stuff um, as needed. And I hope you all have a wonderful evening.